some. So I entitled this a Foshini Park work session. It's really what I'm trying to achieve for two purposes. Um, first is, as part of the master plan, we're going to get permits for the entire park. Um, what that does is it saves the city substantial permit fees in the future. Um, if you do one field or if you do all the fields, you're going down for these permits. So that's the goal. I know we've talked about that before. So that's the first goal I have today, is to understand if the master plan is close enough um, to submit for those permits, because we're looking at up to six months to receive them. So we want to get that in soon. The second goal is for our first project, which is field 789, to make sure we understand the scope there so we can get started on that design and get that out to bid. So the goal is once we get the permits in, the first project can go. So to start, I just wanted to review the existing conditions at Koshini Park, um, just for anyone that might not be familiar. There are nine, I'll say, usable fields there. Uh, technically, there's 10, but the one really isn't maintained as a field. Seven of them have grass in fields. Um, two have skinned in fields. I would say three of the fields are in a very poor orientation for some. Um, just something to note as we continue to talk through this. There's two parking areas. There's a larger gravel parking area, and then there are asphalt spaces. Total about 148 spaces. There are two playgrounds, um, one main field house that has restrooms, concessions, all of that. One field has a lighting system. And about two thirds of the park, just to note, is within the 100 year floodplain, right? So we're seeing drainage issues there pretty frequently. Um, also, most of the park falls within the waterfront development zone, which is really what's dragging us into this extensive DEP permitting. So going to the next slide, just going through the master plan real quick, and I know it's hard to see, I wanted to provide some orientation here so that the existing condition is under um, this master plan. We are proposing eight fields, all of them to have sports lighting systems at this point. Um, the middle field you'll see is a multi-purpose synthetic turf field that includes baseball and football at this time. Um, so it's a 250 foot baseball field, full size football field with 10 foot sidelines. Um, the orientation, uh, if you just look plan, so south but plan left, is off, off to the side a little bit because the city has substantial trees there um, that we're trying to preserve. So you can see that that's why that's offset. We also have five synthetic turf, um, so full synthetic turf, infield, outfield, 250 foot baseball and softball fields. I'll talk about who plays there in a minute. Um, and those all wrap around to the left and above that multi-purpose field. So that's all turf, if you would. We have one natural grass, 250 foot baseball or softball field. That's up in the right corner of this plan. And then we have one natural grass, 300 foot baseball field. We are proposing for that to have a grass infield, something we could work through. Really doesn't matter for the DEP permits at this point. We had two different two-lane batting cages that were spread throughout the park for use. There were three parking areas. As shown in this plan, there are over 300 spaces. I think 312 was the exact amount, so substantially more parking. Um, just so you know, a uh, frame of reference, the minimum I'd recommend here for the fields alone. So for active use, would be 250. Um, so we're really not that far above it. Uh, the two playgrounds we're proposing, your large one that exists um, to the west of the site, and then we're proposing one new one. We are proposing for the main field house to remain at this point, be renovated, and space for another bathroom concession building. That's near 789, so where the first project would go. There is an outdoor fitness area included as well. That's something we saw in the DCA report and we've heard here that's included, that could be modified in the future. Um, we're reorienting the park drive and that's for a few purposes to fit the fields. The fields are getting much larger. So that's one thing we heard is the little league fields were for, uh, they were too small. They weren't able to accommodate a lot of different age groups. So the field size grew quite a bit. Also fitting a football field required us to realign that drive. So. Uh, I know it's difficult to see, um, but it realigns, it goes closer to the existing field house, and then also there's a new exit um, as well. Uh, we are proposing at this point for it to be two-way for the whole path. Again, something we could work through. Um, and then drainage improvements and fill throughout the park. 
So just to maybe give some context to some of those things I just said, if we can go to the next slide, please, Frank. So the first thing I wanted to discuss, the discussion points, really are the field size and the number of fields. Um, so seven of, eight of the eight fields, um, excluding field four, right? So lower right that you see on this plan, that would have the grass in field. The rest of them could be used for softball. We would recommend a portable mound for baseball, multi-purpose, I know you're using some now. Um, so all of these, synthetic, natural, um, would be flat, created flat. Seven of the eight fields, again, excluding field four, are appropriate for 12 U and under. Okay, so you're getting most your age groups there. Field four really is your large field, and the focus there would be for over 12 U, so your 14 U and up, high school age um, children. And again, that's the lower right. The football field, like I said, is regulation size. I will say the sidelines are only 10 feet, something we probably could expand a little bit, but that's what we have right now. The orientation. So on this, it's, I know it's hard to read, but you can see where there's a green box and a red box. So all the fields are ideally oriented except for the two that are marked with the red boxes, okay? So the one that's part of the multi-purpose field, the reason for that is because the multi-purpose field, the football field, I should say, is ideally oriented, right? So we want to provide an ideal orientation there, and that's really play in the evening um, throughout most of the seasons to play in the evening there. So to do that, the baseball field or softball field um, ended up being in a less than ideal orientation. What's that mean? For you know, sunset time, there will be you know about an hour, half hour, where you're going to have sun in the batters. The second one you see on the top as well that also is less than ideal orientation. Again, we had to fit these larger fields here. So you have two fields. Currently, I'd say you have three that are really bad. Um, so you have two in this proposed, proposed layout. So miscellaneous things, again, the two-way um, park road to circulate through, whether or not that was something we want to consider. In my opinion, at this point, for the master plan, and even this first project, we don't have to change that and decide on that. We have the proper widths. It's something we can continue to evaluate. The parking area, I told you the backup for the spaces we provided. I think it's appropriate for what you do here, the events you have here, for the active and passive uses. Um, and the last thing I was hoping to get some feedback on were the bathroom facilities. So again, we have the existing field house that would remain, be renovated, and then we're proposing one more facility near that first project area, which is field 789. We weren't proposing any additional beyond that at this point. So something to um, consider. I would like to understand that as part of the first project so all the utilities can get in place if we need to run anything new. Anyone want to talk about this before I go to the first project? Or I just had a quick question. You had mentioned yeah. regulation size football field, but I also heard you, thought I heard you say 250 feet, which would not be a regulation. Football. Sorry, that's the that's the size of the baseball field. Okay. That's a uh, so the football field is 300 feet, which Correct. is 200 feet. Yep. Yeah, regulation. The only thing is uh, that's less than ideal with the football field is the sidelines. But if you look to the west of the football field, there's a pretty wide concrete area. So we were trying to get the fields all in general areas where you could have these paths, have these areas where people um, can watch, people can wait. Um, so I think we have some space there that we can use. So the possibility of putting in the so bleachers. bleachers that can be rolled in and out, they have the portable bleachers? Yeah, so we were proposing, um, so as far as the appurtenances go, mm -hmm. Um, per field, each field we are proposing, um, two sets of bleachers, but definitely something we can uh, use portable type things, so when needed, we can ship them around. What about the elevation of the, of the lane? Yeah, so um, a large part of this is raising the elevation. Um, we're continuing, actually we made great progress this past week with Green Acres to be able to start moving material here. And what we've tested so far from Clay Street um, matches what we could bring here. Sure. So it looks like we'll be able to start. So we're going to, we're going to start moving the, all the dirt from this excavation over to Fushimi Park after we test it. And the, yep, we just need the okay. sign off, um, but we have the process and the contacts in place. So that's what we're doing now. The test pits that were occurring today were being sampled. 
But yes, the fill, um, I mean, any of you that know 789, that was why it was an ideal, and you know, I say 789, it's the existing 8910 for anyone that knows that. But that was an ideal project area because it's much higher. So when you drive out there, that middle area is very low, but these fields are very, uh, very high already. So that allowed us to get a lot more done uh, and not having to worry about the fill. You talk about the two fields on the left. Yeah, so uh, the field 789, the first project, yeah. which is the next one. Yeah, the yeah. Storage yep. 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 Exactly. There's already some netting systems there, good fencing there. We'll try to reuse as much as we can. What's your estimated time to do a project? So the permit, uh, we're expecting to get the permit in early spring. I'd like to get it out to bid as soon as we get that permit in house. Have it out to bid. I think to have a good price, you want it out there. Let's say two months, you award it. Um, and then I think by the end, you know, fall time, you'd be able to play on it. Are you might also expect to get done for the 7 a.m. and night. Yeah. Correct. That's our first, that was the proposed first project. Mm -hmm. um, that's what that recent bond ordinance covered, was field 789. Um, and the next slide kind of goes through what was included in that, some supplemental items. I'm not sure if anyone had any other questions or comments on the master plan. Any Figure out the field house situation. Um, I know it's in bad, bad shape right now, but we want to at least move through with the first phase to get the fields at least working. Um, but utility wise, I guess we have to figure that out as well. Yeah, I mean, yep. Yeah, well, I think that's one great. One of our point. goals, obviously, is that the kids don't miss any baseball field. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some, uh, yeah. So, we, you know, we could try to time it um, where it's summer, summer um, ball. Maybe it's a little bit less than the spring. Um, but the, the 7 a.m. night, the infield is going to be turf? Right? Everything's turf on 7 a.m. night. Infield, not field, yes. Exactly. And I, think, I think we did score partial grass in the outfield. And yeah, I don't mind at all. But there's gophers down there that keep digging holes, I just think. The more grass, the more problems we're going to have in the grass. Yeah, yeah, but there's no maintenance. Right, and spring birds would be another. There's another region. Right, so. Yeah, we have another summer like this. What about the football field? Is it going to be turf or is it going to be? Yeah, it's turf. turf. So everything, um, if you would, uh, left of the main drive on this plan, uh, where it comes in from Camden, would be turf. The only things that are going to be natural um, are on the, the plan right, the two fields on the right. So you say $70,000 in maintenance, maybe. Right. Yeah, really, it will help your drainage situation quite a bit as well um, that you experience here. So, now when they're going to make the fields in the, in the middle, right? Like a field, I think a field number seven, when you're going to have maybe the football field, they're going to do like a crown around the field, and when, the, when you raise it two, three feet, they're going to be like a crown around. Like we got the soccer field and Johnson Park. Yeah, you're definitely going to see that, especially where the uh, larger areas of uh, the, the river should not lay they're going to do something, and then if they're going to hit the turf, they damage the turf. So it better elevate the crown yeah. you know, to protect. Yeah. yeah, the goal is to raise it above the floodplain, um, protect you guys in the future, not put um, yeah, you know, good money on that. Sorry, I can't remember. Did we say we we're paving the parking lot or leaving that gravel? Uh, we were recommending to pave it. Okay. And maybe get some storage beneath it. Um, at this point, the way that gravel lot is acting, it's acting as a paved lot. Um, you're not getting any benefit from that. So. Okay. Next. So then, just uh, field seven eight nine. So I apologize for my red outline. Um, my uh, PDF skills aren't great, I guess. Um, but this is the area of our first project that that recent bond ordinance um, included. And I just wanted to outline the improvements that we are proposing at this time, and again, see if there are any questions. So as I stated, these will all be synthetic turf fields. There's three of them. They are 250 feet each, which really allows a lot of kids, softball and baseball, to play on them. And that was, I know, a large goal. Um, there is one two-lane battery tunnel included. You can see that's on the lower left side of this plan. Uh, we are proposing sports netting to um, supplement what you have out there, um, also fix anything that's in poor condition. Um, fill and drainage systems are, I'll say, less needed here, but we are proposing them. That's a big part of this project. 
that will protect the fields from flooding and also meet the DEP requirements for stormwater management. Um, oh, with the uh, three fields, uh, that will include all fencing, sports lighting systems for all three, two bleacher units per field, and each will have an electronic scoreboard. We are including landscape plantings and restoration as part of this. Um, there will be a reinforced path for a future restroom concession building. We're recommending to include it in this first bid as a supplemental item. Um, as you know, prices have been all over the place. Um, so something like that where you can prepare for it and it's just going to be dropped in place, I think is the appropriate way to do it. Include it as supplemental. If you have the funds to cover it, we put it in. If not, if you push for the future. And then with that, you know, you can see a little better on this plan, but these fields will require some reorientation of the roof. So we would do a temporary, um, I'd say, road here. For now, we're not going to change where the park um, outlets. We're not going to change that exit there. We're really not going to change most of the lot. I think what you could expect is when you come into the park, it would seem like you're coming into that lot, and then you're going to have a stop, and then you would turn and hit this temporary road. So that's something we would we have to work through, but without taking all phases on at once, you really can't avoid that. So I think there's a simple way to address it here, um, but that is something we have to plan on. Where would the temporary road be? I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, yeah, I want to go point to it if that's okay. I'll try to describe it for anyone that's listening. But so this is where the road comes down now. Uh -huh. So I would imagine this is coming into this parking lot almost, right? That's what I would recommend. Yep. And then they would have to almost make this right. So it'd be like a stop, control, make a right, then they'd go out, and they would join the existing road here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of, you see this area here, I included in the red? That's why I included that area. That'd be the work for the temporary road. Okay. The type of lighting that we want to use, don't worry about it, the tenants in that C. No, um, I don't think that they'll, you could see, the field orientation as well, uh, I think I think we'll be okay. Um, okay. So no, we'll make sure that that's not the case. But as I always say, there was always fields here first, so. <laughs> yeah. Are, are, are we losing any trees? And so, how many? so we're trying to minimize that. Uh, I am going to do a conditional um, survey of them as well. Where the drive comes through, there's that really large tree. We're going to kind of go through that area. The one that I'm questioning is past the existing field house. I do think that one larger tree might have to come down there. So we included some, uh, substantial restoration and new plantings as part of this. But that really old tree is going to stay. That tree's going to stay. I do believe you have a record-breaking tree on this property. <laughs> so. Okay, let's just make sure that we get some good information to shade tree and environmental condition and life just not the shocker. So whatever yeah. we have, we should give them a, a little heads up and you. They drive by and see the chainsaws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as part of this temporary, I don't think we're gonna take down any trees. So that would be a future phase. So definitely time to work with them on that. But we did the plan was altered a little bit to keep that older tree. Right. Place. Yeah, that's why that football field, uh, multi-purpose field is offset. Um, again, plan left, if you would. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of issues that we need to share. You know, the same, the same turf fields. I mean, they should just have that information. Mm -hmm. I see Albert is part of the environmental question to make sure that we get this information to everybody so they have their opportunity to come and speak on it should they want to. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Whatever you need me to share, I'd be glad to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.